some of us already told that they lost their faith in democracy, it is only normal that they did because democracy without the social justice, with all these neoliberal policies, is just a theatrics of itself. This is what I'm trying to do in together. Mm -hmm. How to lose a country, uh, I talked about why we are seeing this rising authoritarianism and why it's a global subject. It's not about the crazy countries like Turkey, our country, but actually it's coming here as well. Uh, and it was like three years ago, I think, I was in the... In the big hole? Big hole. I'm so sorry. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> big hole, and I remember a journalist in the audience, maybe Kirsty was there as well, uh, a journalist, he was a journalist, who told me, but Turkey is a Muslim country, uh, and that's why fascism is rising there. And I said, well, I mean, like, the <laughs> Christianity didn't save you the first time around. Let's see how it works in the second time. So he was still stuck in imagination. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so uh, what had happened in Turkey is now happening in a different scale uh, in European countries. Of course, every country is unique, and I'm not comparing countries at all. Um, but uh, there's a pattern. Uh, there are seven steps from uh, democracy to dictatorship. Unfortunately, ten steps backward <laughs> if you yeah. want to go back to democracy. That's why I wrote together ten choices for a better now with the new subtitle, A Manifesto Against the Heartless World. And what I'm trying to do is, one, uh, to crack the narrative, as my dear friend Bio says, um, which is to say, you cannot fix democracy here and there. Mm -hmm. you have to, we have a global problem uh, of losing democracy be, because we have a global problem with the system we are living in. Uh, this problem is inherently neoliberal problem. Climate crisis as well is coming, stemming out of neoliberalism as well. And the crisis of democracy is very much intertwined with the crisis of capitalism. We have become... We have come to the end of the system, and yeah. that's why our problems are uh, piling up. But the most important reason of the, uh, our problems is imagination deficiency. Yeah, and, and is, is part of the problem also that we suffer, that we are held hostage in this short-term thinking, that we are short-sighted? or are No, there... every system has this magical ability to make you feel like if it ends, it will be the end of time. We are no different than the, you know, sailors in the Middle Ages. Mm -hmm. We think that there is the end of sea and we are going to drop uh, to the void if we come to the end of capitalism. We forgot, I mean, like neoliberalism is such a strong uh, ideology that it made us forget, forget that it is an ideology. It made us uh, believe that it is the natural state of humankind. Yeah. It is not. It's easier to imagine the end of the world than the end of capitalism. Exactly. But then frame. more importantly, uh, some of us already told that they lost their faith in democracy. It is only normal that they did because democracy without the social justice, with all these neoliberal policies, is just a theatrics of itself. Mm -hmm. There are guys that we vote for and they go to the you know parliament, they so-called represent us and so on and so forth, but we cannot actually decide on the most important things on our own, such as how much, how much money we're going to earn, such as uh, how many days we're going on vacation, uh, and so many other things, like central things. Because neoliberalism, this system, told us that politics is uh, you know, separate from economy, and we, normal people, citizens, we cannot decide about uh, economy. Yeah, And that's why we cannot decide about climate action either in this so-called democratic system in the current conventional democracies. Yeah, so, and do you think it's the same problem in that sense, that the climate crisis and the democratic crisis are the same threat? Absolutely. And now, uh, rightfully so, many people who are in the climate action, who see the urgency of the situation are already frustrated by seeing that how democratic mechanisms are not working. They are not responding to this most important crisis of our, crisis of our time. Yeah. Yes, because those democratic systems are not there for you, therefore to protect the privileged and so on. And in order to make them yours, 
you have to come up with new different tools, one of them being citizen assemblies, one of them being sortition, one of them being you know, deliberative democracy, and so mm -hmm. on and so forth. Although they are not shaped enough, we are looking ways to reform, to transform, rather, the representative democracy, which yeah. is already not working uh, for us. And you, you said before that you don't think that our problems can be patched. Like, we don't, you, you don't solve the democratic mm. crisis by giving yeah. Yeah. separate solutions. Yeah. But then you do mention separate tools. So yeah. how do we go from tonight? So how can we take this discussion from being about separate tools into be being something systemic or something that is about heart, maybe, or about the human experience, maybe? Two things. Uh, unfortunately, uh, all climate activists... Uh, we'll have to come to terms with the thing, with the fact that they are going to have a really hardcore political struggle, mm -hmm. uh, because there is still this myth, especially in European minds, that if we give rational arguments, people will be convinced, so they're going to solve the problem. However. Politics, especially in 21st century, does not work like that. No. It works with politics of emotions. That's why I wrote together. Uh, you cannot convince people with facts anymore. Yes, facts are important. Yes, truth matters and so on. But unfortunately, f doing politics is not only limited to facts and truth. Uh, fascists, new fascists, right-wing populists, authoritarian leaders are the masters of politics of emotions. What they do is stir emotions and the destructive emotions. Mm -hmm. And what we have to do as progressive, progressive people, pro uh, people who are concerned about climate, who are concerned about planet equality, justice and humanity, we have to think about emotions seriously as well. Because yes, we are living in the age of fear, we are living in the age of confusion, uh, we are living actually in a very interesting future. Because this is the first time in human history that humanity is mourning in future tense. We are looking at the sea and we are thinking about the time we are going to lose it. Mm -hmm. We cannot look at trees or woods without thinking that this summer they'll be gone. So we I are even living. Think about summer. Yeah, we anymore. cannot really think about future in the way that the previous generations have thought about future. So these fears, these confusions, have to be addressed. We cannot solve these confusions and fears and anxieties by numbers and you know by giving facts. Yeah, and so so. In a way, you're saying these, oh, these masters of emotions, the authoritarianists of this world, the Erdogans, I'm, I'm, I'm fortunate to mention his name for the first time today, mm. is a master of this emotion, piggybacking on fake histories, very, very strong melancholic feelings. Is it, is it the answer for us to have the debate in civil society about those same emotions and will we then fight within those institutions or do we need to get a new democratic deliberative system on the, on the line to challenge the autocrats of this world? First of all, I want to say this out loud, and you'll enjoy this, honey. Erdogan is not an important man. Hear, hear. <laughs> no, he's not. Uh, there are so many of them. Uh, and what they have done, especially in the last decade, and in this country as well, although they look blonder, uh, um, they told us two things. Uh, you're going to lose your home to strangers, and I am promising uh, to make our home great again. Yeah. So they were actually speaking to a sense of loss, sense uh, of loss of certainty, loss of home, uh, loss of security. This means that even though these guys are really insane, you know, uh, psychopaths, maniacs, and so on, there must be something that is resonating. There must be a feeling, collective feeling in us that is resonating with what they say. So we have a sense of loss. So how are we, those people who are concerned about climate, who, are cons who want to do you know, better, who want to better the world, how are we going to address that feeling? Yeah. 
that is our political problem. And yes, it can be, be with deliberative democracy because, although I'm quite skept skeptical about the process and so on, but it says to people, I believe in you, I want to believe in you, and I want okay. you to believe in me. So it might be a way to reinvigorate, to renew our faith in humankind and in democracy. Neoliberalism told us for so long that we are selfish, self-centered bastards, competitive assholes. We started believing in it. We are not that, not only that at least. I think we are inherently prone to solidarity. We're inherently selfless, altruist, and so on as well. So if we can politicize this truth about humankind, then we can have faith in ourselves and in politics, that therefore in politics. Because fascism, what we are going through in the world right now, is the total absolute lack of faith mm. in humankind. Mm. Mm? So in order to uh, be against fascism in today's world, we have to have 100% faith in humankind. And then on, only then on, we can have faith in politics and thus democracy. <laughs>